Good morning. Sorry for the late start. This is Bob Golden. I'm um, Executive Vice President of Technomic, and I'm going to be your moderator for today or your, your, your speaker on the very timely and important subject of supermarket prepared foods and how they're battling for share with restaurants. As I said, I'm One moment, please. My contact information is shown above, and as I say, Bob Golden, I do, I'm Executive Vice President of Technomic. I do head up our firm's uh, prepared food initiative, and we'll talk further about that. By way of introduction to this important topic, what we want to point out is that we are observing a very significant fundamental shift in where and how consumers are buying foods and beverages. What we see is converging consumer trends with increased demand for fresh and healthy products, urbanization, demand for local sourcing, continued demand and growth in convenient product forms. We're, we're seeing shifting demographics with respect to generational shifts, the growth of millennial who have very, very different demand and consumption patterns, smaller households. Many of these things are obviously talked about often. And the casualties we're seeing are a decline in many, many core grocery categories, including center store, shelf stable and frozen, weakness in tra many traditional food service segments and traditional supermarkets, and we'll come back to that again, and the emergence of new channels, most notably natural and specialty foods. As a consequence, we're seeing the a fresh foods being back in the spotlight, I think, is appropriate. And you see some of these quotes from, from major periodicals. Supermarket customers are hot for takeout. Grocer, grocers are giving restaurants a lot of competition. Even the C stores, as Business Week is reporting, are putting more focus on food and fresh food in particular. And it's fresh prepared foods are the focus of FMI's total store collaboration initiative, which we'll be, again, referencing later. But in many ways, if you kind of look back, uh, turn back the clock, 10, 15 years, we've heard this before. And, and many of you probably remember the famous HMR home meal replacement initiative with companies like ETSEs and most notably Boston Market making huge inroads in a very short time frame before they kind of quote unquote imploded. We also saw, uh, and the reasons for that were probably a little, uh, were multiple. One is many of these concepts were ahead of their times. They think they did not manage necessarily variety right. They made some significant merchandising gaffes. And price and quality were often not what consumers expected. And then. In the past uh, five, six years, we saw Tesco, a very, very successful UK retailer, make a huge push, a very significant and expensive push with their fresh and easy concept. They did open 200 stores, which is pretty in interesting in, insofar as it was a unproven concept. And a heavy emphasis of this was, was fresh, prepackaged products. And unfortunately for them, consumers did not perceive these products as fresh. Merchandising wasn't localized, and they have, you know, since uh, basically withdrawn from the market, sold it off to Utaipa. Do want to point out, though, that fresh prepared meals are a mainstay in almost all major UK retailers. You see, we see the same thing in Benelux in Japan, and the model in, in UK with ASDA, Sainsbury, Tesco, Marks and Spencer is chilled packaged meals, which are ready to cook, and meal kits both at value and premium levels. And this is basically uh, the model there, extremely well accepted. If we look at the business in the US, supermarket fresh prepared foods, which is FPF, is about a $23 billion segment. By way of contrast, limited service restaurants is $240 billion, full service somewhere around $220 billion. So supermarket prepared foods is a very small segment. However, you see tremendous growth, 6%, versus much, much slower growth rates, about 3.5% for limited service, 2.5% for full service this year. And this is a pattern where supermarket fresh prepared foods has outperformed the restaurant business for a number of years. And we, again, expect this pattern to continue. And when we look at why the 
the accelerated growth of superior performance of the supermarket category, supermarket fresh foods, especially in light of this, the, the very slow growth of supermarkets in general, we really see a, a number of contributing factors. One is the sameness or staleness in many restaurant segments, as I alluded to before. Casual and family style food service, full service restaurants in particular, and including many traditional quick service segments such as burger, where consumers, have, they, they are very mature. Uh, secondly, the retailers, the supermarket chains, have upgraded expanded their food service programs, professionalized their management, put in food service, uh, professional food service management, and they quote unquote beginning to get it. As I said earlier, we have seen tremendous growth and are continuing to see tremendous growth, accelerating growth in the upscale fresh format type concepts with players like Whole Foods, Sprouts, Fresh Time, and I think even Trader Joe fits in there, although they're more of a specialty concept. And they are, these concepts are heavily dependent on fresh prepared foods. It's a core element of their concept. When you look at the consumer, we've done significant, many surveys. They believe that fresh prepared food rates very high on value. 60, in our most recent survey, 60% of it say that the, the Value is higher than restaurants. They like the fact that they can mix and match and get the quantities they want, and of course, no tipping. So in a consequence, we are seeing increased consumer demand, and certain, including from the millennials who find shopping at many of these stores, like Mariano's in my hometown, is, is an exciting concept. And many of these stores have blended an entertainment quotient and a sit-down quotient to make them even more appealing. However, there are a number of vulnerabilities that the supermarkets have in our survey work, qualitatively and quantitatively. In many cases, the, the, the presentation isn't appealing. It doesn't connote fresh. In-store placement is not always optimal. The delis are, are in the back of the store. Uh, too much labor and shrink continues to plague many, many retailers. We'll come back with some numbers in a few moments to show you that shrink is almost always double digit and is something that needs to be managed. In many cases, the items are not perceived to be that unique. Many of the prepared food programs are still heavily reliant on fried chicken, rotisserie chicken, products like that, which are considered passe or traditional are very tradition, not as unique as what some of the leading edge retailers are offering. Some other issues is insufficient variety or lack of variety. And a variety, of course, is a double-edged sword. Too much variety leads to too much shrink, which decreases the appeal to the retailer. But again, there is a, a balancing act there. Appearance, which is critical element for ours, consumers want the products to look fresh. And hot and cold food bars often don't meet that. So it's a challenge that many of the, the uh, retailers struggle with. Not insufficient number of better for you options, and then overall freshness. The consumers, again, this is a challenge for, especially in the prepackaged realm, where the the consumers often don't believe the products are as fresh, even though they are, in point of fact, recently packaged. So we have some challenges and hurdles that the retailers and the leading supermarkets are are continuing to address. There are some companies that. In our view, and many others in the trade, by no means is this a comprehensive list that are best in class, leading edge, get it, and are benefiting significantly in terms of customer loyalty. Whole Foods, HEB, Wegmans, all are the three of the major chains that, in our view, are really, really uh, manage this strategically into great profit and sales benefit. There's also a host of smaller regional chains. Again, not a comprehensive list, but Mariano's, Heinen's, Bristol Farms, Rayleigh's about a 130-unit chain. You can add Hagen's to the list, and, and many others that are very focused on local market preference, uh, store localization, connoting this fresh. And again, I think. Many of these chains are the model for the people like Kroger and Safeway who are realized that strategic imperative to grow their fresh prepared food programs. If you look at the business, the best in class companies, 
are growing at about, their fresh, fresh prepared food programs are growing at about six to eight percent. The average company is about two to four. The retail, the store itself, two to four is about where the store is. Retail is growing about two to three percent. So again, companies who are who get it, who execute effectively, are demonstrating superior sales growth. If you look at the best in class companies, their contribution margin, they manage COGS better, lower labor costs, and as a consequence are far more profitable. Almost 50% gross margin or contribution margin relative, which is 13, 14 points higher than the average. So again, the profit, and the profit focus is there as well. And again, one other way to look at the business is Average versus best in class. The best in class companies can generate 10 to 15, in many cases more, but 10 to 15 percent of sales from fresh prepared foods versus three to five for the average company. In gross profit, they will have a, the, the best in class companies are getting a 25 or percent, 25 or greater percent of their gross profit coming from that department versus a much more modest five to seven percent. So the um, in, Profit, the, the, the profit and sales contribution is very significant for companies that exhibit best-in-class characteristics. And again, as we, as we think this through, when you look at the supermarket business today, there are very few ways to differentiate on center store anymore in terms of price, selection. So the, the retailers are looking at the perimeter, and they're looking at fresh prepared foods as a key differentiator. We showed earlier about how it can drive pro both profit and sales growth. It builds traffic. It aligns with the consumer trends in terms of takeout, convenient, variety, value. And if they do it right, better for you and on trend with local. The business is adaptable. We see it as still a relatively small, underdeveloped segment. 23, 24 billion dollars with lots of headroom, and most retailers are looking. This is a way, a, a significant window of opportunity. Incremental improvements in departmental performance will contribute mightily. So, in 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 our view, we see that fresh prepared foods will gain share. It is a strategic priority for many retailers, including major companies like Kroger, which is undergoing a significant review of their pro of their fresh prepared food and uh, department we are seeing improved performance we are we are seeing gr accelerating growth and so the 6% that we should accelerate as the major chains get more focused and it is certainly impacting food uh, full service restaurants most particularly especially the takeout business which is growing now at a pretty snails pace one to two percent so it is having a significant impact on the traditional restaurant business again most notably full service restaurants technomic is pleased to announce that we we will be affiliating with food Mar fmi food marketing institute we have spoken at their midwinter conference we will be participating in their connect show in june in chicago along with at carney and we are going to be involved in a multi-phase uh benchmarking and segment monitoring as well as some laboratory studies and we're very excited about that. I do want to announce our next series of webinars um, that are going to be on our website and you can register through technomic.com under the events. Uh, it should be up by the end of the day. On June 3rd we'll be talking about group purchasing organizations. June 24th breakfast. On June, July 15th broker consolidation. On August 12th, the Cash and Carry Channel, and um, September 9th, mergers and acquisition in the food industry. So we encourage you to register for these. We greatly um, acknowledge and thank IFTA for their collaboration support of these programs. And I encourage anybody to uh, contact me directly with comments or questions. And this will conclude the webinar. We thank you very much for your participation and look forward for future participation in upcoming webinars. Thank you.